meeting and welcome to the Tuesday, June 11th regular school board business meeting. We all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? I do have some adjustments. Um, I'd like to add an 8F consideration to approve Marsha Weeks as business manager. Kind of in the end. Okay. And then um, I'd like to add. Um, Wendy Dorzewick's name to the co-curricular list uh, to approve tonight, and she is the district webmaster. And the girls' basketball team, uh, many of them are playing lacrosse tonight, so they'll be here sometime, <laughs> but um, when they finish their game, so uh, when they come in, hopefully we can recognize them then. Hopefully with good news. Ho hopefully with good news. So would Wendy's name go under extracurricular stipend? Um, yes, right above the, it could go right above the kindergarten team leader on that list. Yeah. Oh. That's it. <laughs> okay. Um, next, may I have a motion for approval of board minutes? I move we approve the board minutes as listed in our agenda for Tuesday, June 11th. I second. Um, we, maybe we should clarify which minutes we're approving. It's for uh, Tuesday, May 14th. Okay. I didn't see. Thank you. It's usually listed, but you second any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Um, let's see, comments from student representatives, they're not here. So we will move on to comments from the public on agenda items. Um, we, I know that we don't have this on the agenda, I don't believe, um, but we, Ann Carnique is um, here to um, make I some. Describe what I'm do. That would be <laughs> that would be very helpful. Thank you for welcoming me tonight. Um, I'm Ann Carney, and I'm Cape Elizabeth State Representative to the Legislature. Um, Re uh, Senator Rebecca Millette is all, was also a co-sponsor of these um, motions, but we um, asked the legislature to acknowledge uh, um, athletic performances for the winter sports season for some um, very special accomplishments by Cape students. And so I've brought them with me today and I'll deliver them to you, but I'd just like to acknowledge Lisa Godreau for uh, winning the individual Class B cross country state champion, so that was the fall. Darcy Cochran for winning the Class B championship in the 55 meter hurdles. The Cape High School boys basketball team for winning the Class B South championship. Cape Elizabeth High School girls swim team for winning the Class B championship and to Olivia Ty for her state record in the 200 freestyle. And then for the Cape Elizabeth High School boys ski team, Class B Al Alpine Championship for the second year in a row. And then these are certificates that if you could deliver them, should I pr give them to Mr. Shedd perhaps? If he, if he doesn't mind, yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Carney, thank for you. being here. So my name is Ayla Mansman. This is not on the agenda, but we have uh, we have something that we'd like to bring to all of your attention. Is that is now the time to do that? We can. Things are not on the agenda. 
Well, are they under citizen's comments still? Uh, we're under, yeah, citizen comments, yeah. For items on the agenda. Oh, for items on the agenda. There was no section on their agenda for items, for the public comments on items that weren't on the agenda. No. Right. So we didn't really know. You have to make a request to, um, to get them to <clears throat> Normally, we would, if it's not on the agenda, you would make a special request in advance, but given it's the last meeting of the, of the school year, go ahead. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, so we are current and recently graduated students from Cape Elizabeth High School. We're here tonight to bring up an issue of sexual assault in our school district. There's currently no policy specifically outlining student expectations guidelines for how to report consequences for perpetrators and repeat perpetrators and what student rights are regarding these issues in the, in the student handbook. We are also aware that there is an investigation happening into our school's response to multi multiple reports in the district, both middle and high, both middle and high school. We are here tonight to ask that the school board work with us over the summer to develop a comprehensive policy that will protect our students. We also want the administration of the high school to be held accountable for proper staff training around Title IX, mandated reporting, and support for students who disclose. We are here respectfully and out of dire concern for our peers. Who have, who have personally seen traumatized, who have personally been traumatized by the current state of our school's response. And we want to work towards solution and early prevention education that will inhibit any more trauma. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lily Frame. I live at Four Dermot Drive. The story I'm about to tell is not my own, but a survivor's who is unable to be here tonight. She wants you to hear her story. I cannot speak to her experience. I can speak to my own in my four years at CEHS, so I'd be happy to answer any questions. Here is her story. Let me be clear, I do not blame anyone in this town for what one individual chose to do to me. The perpetrator of my assault acted on his own. Why, what I expected from the Cape Elizabeth School District was an effort to protect a student like me in the aftermath of a serious and inexcusable act of violence by another student. Instead, I was left unbelieved, unprotected, and unsafe because of the actions and choices of mandatory reporters and school administrators at Cape Elizabeth High School. I did not mention my assault to anyone in Cape Elizabeth until the June after my junior year. The circumstances leading to this disclosure are an example of the dangerous behaviors exhibited by Cape Elizabeth High School administrators. The boy who had assaulted me made threats against me, which were specific in nature. They involved gun violence and a desire to come into the school to commit those acts. Despite the fact that my name was the one mentioned as the first person who would be shot, no one working for the Cape Elizabeth School District ever informed me that I was potentially in danger. I was never contacted, though other students who had allegedly heard the threat were brought in for questioning. When one of these students told me about what was going on, my parents demanded I be given the opportunity to speak with the head of the school's internal investigation into the incident. I knew I needed to disclose my assault in order to stress that this was a student with violent tendencies. I told that this student had been violent with me in the past and had proceeded to harass me after our relationship had ended. I dismissed this statement entirely, replying with a dismissive wave of his hand that he doesn't know anything about what happened between the perpetrator and myself. I pressed further, but it became clear that my concerns were of no importance. I was told that I had nothing to worry about. Because these threats were only brought to light after the school had ended for the summer, there was no punishment at the time for the individual who made the threats. It's important that I note I also made aware of both the assault and the threats. She too told me those two things had nothing to do with each other. In the February of my senior year, an entire calendar year and two months after the initial assault, it was brought to light that the threats had not stopped last June. I learned only from other students that the perpetrator of my assault had been suspended a single day for continuing threats of gun violence. Again, Cape Elizabeth High School administrators failed to inform me that the same individual who had assaulted, harassed, and threatened me before was making even more serious threats. Now, the perpetrator was given a day-long suspension. To convey the seriousness of these threats, Cape Elizabeth police decided to take all guns from the res residents of the perpetrator in February after the second round of threats came to light. At my graduation, the boy sat directly in front of me. 
At project graduation, he crowded me with his friends and I spent the night trembling. Throughout my senior year of high school, I was told by that this boy was a troubled young man who was by no means dangerous. I was told that I ought to seek therapy to help with my trauma, a trauma which they pretended did not exist. I gave my assaulter counseling to help him through his difficult time. These administrators even suggested I sit down with my perpetrator face to face so that I might hear his side of the story. I refused to allow any other student in Cape Elizabeth schools to become the villain in the narrative that administrators force upon them, for fear that the pristine idea of our school system may be shattered. This story will be rewritten, and this time will be narrated by individuals who are willing to stand up for what is right. I also have copies of her testimony if you'd like to see them. Hi, my name is Christina Enriquez and I'm a junior. Um, I reported my assault twice. And this was back almost a year ago. This was in October 2018. And nothing was left uh, beyond that room. Nothing was reported, even though under Title IX mandated reporting. Um, I'm currently in an investigation with the school right now. But, um, so my concern is about staff not knowing too much about mandated reporting and how big of an issue that is. And my parents were very concerned when they were not informed about what happened. Um, I was also brushed off. I was told not to put my mental energy into my assault. I was told he may have thought it was a romantic way to wake me up. This happened while I was asleep, the assault. And when I tried to bring to light what had happened to me and tried to explain, I kept getting brushed off and the topics kept getting changed. So I just wanted to inform you guys and just say that I think there needs to be more done about um, mandated reporting in the school and how important it is. Thanks. Thank you. Well, th thank you all three of you for um, coming tonight. I did not um, know this was coming, um, just to be clear, and uh, we will look to gather with you in the future, in the near future. Thank you very much. So we're going to move on now to um, presentations. Um, the girls basketball team, I think we're going to wait until after the cross game. Um, and then next, I think, Jeff, we're going to um, present the Presidential Scholar Award or nomination. presenting the Presidential Scholar Award. I think that gets presented when Rohan goes to a trip in Washington, D.C., uh, which is coming up later this month, I think. Okay. Um, so this is Rohan Friedman and his twin sister, Zara, and mom, Sabrina. Um, so they are here. Um, so the Presidential Scholar Award, there are 3.5 million high school seniors in America, um, and there are presidential scholars 161. Um, I couldn't find my calculator today, so I didn't do that as a percentage, but it's a really, 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 really tiny percentage of sort of the strongest, best students in America. So Rohan has been selected as one of two presidential scholars for Maine. He'll have an opportunity to go to Washington, D.C., hear some fascinating speakers, meet some fascinating people. Um, so Rohan is, um, I've seen his resume. It's really incredibly long <laughs> uh, because he's done so much. He's, he is active in World Affairs Council. He's a member of the boys swimming team, one of the, one of the strongest members of the boys swimming team. He's been swimming for years. Um, he's very active in our World Affairs Council and in Model United Nations events. Um, 
He has received, if I'm correct about this, 11 scholastic writing awards over the course of his high school career. Um, in 2015, um, his, his dad has a very long commute, like multiple hours of commute. Um, and watching his dad sort of grow up, grew up with that, Rohan is a bit of a tinkerer, so he went down and created a pillow, um, which I think is called the sleep counter pillow, is that? Yeah, like sheep counter. Oh, oh sheep counter, yeah. sheep counter pillow. Um, and which won the 2015 3M Young Scholars Merit Award, which is again is a nationwide competition. Um, I'm not sure if Rohan charged his dad for that or his marketing at all, but it uh, sounds like there will at least be some possibilities. In 2017, um, Rohan um, went to the World Food Prize Conference in I Iowa, where he learned a from practicing scientists and folks in agriculture about global hunger, um, which got him fascinated to explore the following summer. He applied for an internship in Beijing, China. So he worked for eight weeks in a laboratory working in rice fields and doing a lot of genetics-related research to try to identify strands of rice that um, could survive a variety of climates, I believe. Uh, so Rohan was a featured TEDx speaker, sort of talking about his passion for addressing issues of food insecurity around the world. So we wanted to bring Rohan to the school board to acknowledge he is one of America's outstanding students, and he's right here in Cape Elizabeth. So I don't know if you, should I bring, bring would you? Yes, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. please. So Rohan, come on up. <laughs> It's pretty unbelievable. I wasn't really expecting. Um, it's like a kind of a long process to apply and lots of steps. And I didn't even think I'd make it past like the first step. Um, so I'm, I was pretty much in shock and still pretty unbelievable just thinking about it. Um, but I just like to thank like all my teachers throughout the years for everything. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, um, Jeff, and I believe that you um, are on the slate for um, some of the next steps of the recognition of retirees. Um, so um, Jason is going to talk about Lisa, so we'll start with uh, Lisa German's retirement, and Jason. Good evening. Thank you for coming, Lisa, tonight, too. <laughs> Lisa does not like attention drawn to her, so I'm gonna tr kind of take it easy. Uh, so thank you for letting me speak tonight about Lisa Derman. Um, these, at this time of year when um, some of our folks are retiring, although I'm many years away from that, it, I'm very just passionate and excited for these teachers. I see how hard that they work, and Lisa is certainly no exception in the energy that she has brought um, to Pond Cove and the students right up until the last few days of school is just amazing. So I just have a few words to say. Uh, so Lisa's journey at Pond Cove began long before she became a teacher. She actually started as a parent volunteer in 1995, and that was when her oldest daughter uh, was enrolled in kindergarten at Pond Cove. And during that time, she was active in the PCPA, and, um, and she initiated the teacher mini-grant that, um, and I believe it's the same structure that teachers enjoy today, right? Um, so that was her, and a lot of teachers are grateful. I wonder how many people know that at Pond Cove, that you did that, Lisa. Um, after that, she began substituting at, at Pond Cove and began to realize that she had a passion for working with children and, and teaching. And um, she, her previous career, she was a freelance writer and editor, so she had kind of a flexible schedule which allowed her to sub. And 
then she decided to go back to school and enrolled in the ETEP program and received her teaching certification and then came back to teach at Pond Cove. So it's quite a story, a whole, a whole journey of being a parent and a substitute and a teacher in, in this one school. And she began teaching in 2005 and has been teaching there with us for 14 years. Just a couple quick things during the time at Pond Cove, she proved to be a very talented, a, a, an individual of many talents. Um, so she always keeps a guitar in her classroom and plays guitar and sings with her students every day. And I've had the, the privilege of being in there a few times and it's, uh, the kids just love it. It makes such a difference in the classroom, the climate and the community, it's, it's amazing to see. Uh, Lisa also has wrote and directed several mu musical versions of Dr. Seuss books and last year I was lucky enough to be in one of her plays. It's, it's just amazing. She writes these plays. This one was Charlotte's Web, which went along with our visiting author last year. And um, the staff gather and practice their lines and then perform for the students on stage. Just a, a huge impact to the school. And so. Um, you're welcome to come back and do another play with us if you want to. <laughs> so I just can't say enough, and so Lisa, you will be very greatly missed, and you know that, by the staff and the students and the parents at Pond Cove, but we're also just very happy for you. So congratulations. So um, Tom Lazat could not be, I don't think he's here, he could not be here tonight, but I, um, the superintendent suggested I, it would still be acceptable to say a few words about Tom. So Tom has, is leaving Cape Elizabeth High School after 17 years um, as our instrumental music teacher, um, our jazz program teacher, um, and he, is an outstanding human being and an outstanding teacher who's affected a lot of students' lives. Um, I was saddened, happy for him, but saddened when he came to tell me that he was going to be leaving. Um, Tom started off as a journalist, not as a music, music educator, and worked in journalism after getting a first bachelor's degree in journalism, explored that career for several years, and then decided he wanted to go back to school. Um, to pursue the possibility of teaching music. Um, so he, he told me a story, that I, some of which I didn't know um, recently, and he had to work really, 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 really hard um, in order to be at the level of some of the students in the program that he was in. And anybody who knows Tom knows that hard work is, is something that he does each and every day. So he, he emerged at the top of his program by the end of his program, and then he started a long career as a music educator in Massachusetts, in Florida, um, in Biddeford, Maine, and then here in Cape Elizabeth, Maine, um, where he has finished his career. Um, he is recognized by his colleagues uh, around the state and is well known in New England as one of the, one of the best music teachers in New England, really. Um, he was the recipient this year of a national award called the John Laporta Jazz, on, Jazz Educator of the Year, um, which is a huge honor for him and a wonderful way for him to sort of cap his career. Um, he is leaving um, a little earlier than he expected. Um, he has an incredible relationship with his mom and and he wants to be able to travel with her, which has been a lifelong dream for both of them. He will also remain very active in music educating, conducting various um, uh, drum and bugle corps uh, over various summers. Um, he is always experimenting through the end of his career, always learning about new things, always excited to read about how the brain works and how you touch kids. Um, and always experimenting with innovative ways to, to work, all centered ultimately though on 
how do I help kids become better young people, better people? Um, music was really the way he, uh, he worked with kids, um, he, but he would have been a great teacher no matter what he taught. Um, he was really totally concerned about the whole child, and Cape Elizabeth um, schools will, be, will miss him greatly. Um, it is one of the measures, though, of how well-regarded Tom is leaving the music program that we had some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful candidates, and that's because people regard this program as one of the best in a, a very large area. So we're very fortunate and wish Tom the absolute best because he has had a marvelous career. Um, So now I'm going to talk about Dick Mullen next. Um, I don't remember how many years Dick has been at Cape Elizabeth. I know it's 40 plus. 43. 43, 43 years at Cape Elizabeth. Um, I believe he retires as the longest tenured teacher in the state of Maine, um, K through 12, which he's had an amazing career as an English teacher, a theater teacher, a coach um, of speech teams in a number of different sort of phases, um, and also with sort of mock trial inserted in there as well. Um, he has won, he's, he, the, the, the emails that I've gotten from students over the years in terms of the impact that he has had on kids' lives is really quite incredible. Um, a few weeks ago, a longtime resident of the school, Judy Dooley, showed up out of the blue. I hadn't had, had a conversation with her for 15 years or something, and she started to talk and reminisce about Dick's influence on her students, um, her kids, and she was, um, she was she was clearly highly affected by the result that, the, uh, the effect, the positive effect that Dick has had on her own children. Um, he's a guy who makes a difference. He's a guy who makes waves sometimes. Um, and, but I would say, looking back on all the years that I've been working with Dick, the thing that to me is really incredibly noteworthy and not true at many high schools um, is how he managed to bring in students from all across the social strata of the school. From the students who were the theater, Theater jocks would be my expression. I know that's not an expression, but you know what I mean by that. The kids who grew up to do theater, the kids who studied it, their passion has been it from the time that they were in, in elementary school. But he would bring in students who were uh, not bad at all. Um, and he would invite them in and recognize talents and bring things out of them that they didn't recognize that they had in themselves, including many, many students who were not super active in a lot of things in school. So they found a passion through the theater program that Dick ran. Um, so I will say it is the case that every extracurricular activity he's been involved in, to my knowledge, he has won state championships in. Um, speech team, he has won many, many, many state championships in. Uh, mock trial, he won a state championship while he was in the mock trial program. To me, the thing that was most impressive, though, aside from championships, is, again, how he grew the programs that he was a part of and brought in lots of wide variety of students from all across the spectrum of, of Cape Elizabeth's achievement spectrum, demographic spectrum, whatever it was. Um, other speech team coaches were awed when they saw the Cape Elizabeth kids rolling out of the buses um, showing up for speech programs just in terms of sheer numbers. Um, many, many wonderful theater productions over the years. Some of my personal favorites, and I'm not a theater critic, but some of my personal favorites, The Dishwasher, um, Les Miserables, a musical, Almost Maine, um, which I thought was an incredibly touching piece, um, and his most, one of his, I think it was his most recent musical, Little Mermaid, right? Um, and I could go back and back and back, because there's been many productions that he's done, but um, an extraordinary career, um, and that is Dick Mullen. So thank you so much for what you've had. <laughs>
So next to Dick is Mark Van Darbus, um, who's uh, uh, finishing off a 20-year career at Cape Elizabeth High School. You started the year before I did, I think. Um, so 20 years at Cape Elizabeth High School teaching Spanish. Um, it, Mark is another one who's had a fascinating career before going into education. He is, I'm not sure if you're actively an ordained pastor, um, don't know how that keeps up or whatever, but, but Mark, Mark is, is, a, is a pastor. Um, he has been involved in that aspect of life. He has been involved as an educator, and he is involved as a world traveler. And really, I think the gift that Mark brings every day to his kids in classes is bringing the world to Cape Elizabeth, to his classroom. Um, he ha has, been, has grew up for a significant amount of time in the Philippines, which I probably think probably has something to do with his mastery of Spanish. Um, he has lived in Scandinavia, visited Scandinavia, visited places in Europe, and I think not sure about this because I should have meant to talk to you earlier today, but I think I think there I know that there are other continents as well that he has visited and brought in to his classrooms aspects of all of those things. Um, he is for a guy who's been teaching for a long, 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 long time. He is also one of Cape Elizabeth's um, technology pioneers. Um, whenever I go into any of our world language classrooms, there is always a portion of the class where the kids are talking in groups and listening in groups and that sort of thing. And very frequently they are recording, they, they practice after a period of time and then they record their conversations. That is the, that is the influence of Mark Bendarvis in sort of experimenting with new apps that he's learned about and things like that and then introducing them to his colleagues and introducing them to classes. So one of the things that is true in world language classes, it is not sit and, sit and listen, it is students are very actively involved and technology is one of those aspects that Mark has brought. Um, I will say that one of the things that Mark also brings is every time I have a conversation with him, he knows his kids, not just how they do academically in Spanish, but he knows his kids. He oftentimes knows the families of the kids. He oftentimes knows their parents and their aunts and their uncles and their grandparents um, because he just loves to talk to people, including loves to talk to kids. So it is all about um, the whole child, getting to know the whole child, valuing and respecting the whole child. And those teachers are va incredibly valuable, invaluable, and hard to lose. Um, Mark, is, Mark and I may be having some coffee down in the Lower Mills area a little bit in, in south of Boston because my in-laws live just in Dorchester, and just next to near Milton where Mark is moving to take care of his, his in-laws. So I'm hoping that we get together and have a cup of coffee because he's a wonderful guy to have a conversation with. Um, so thank you, Mark, for all the years of service to Cape Elizabeth High School. And on Mark's left is Mark Soul, <laughs> and uh, Mort. How long have you? How long have you been teaching, Mort? Total. Fifty. Fifty years. Yes. So, the, so, so. I, I'm getting ready for my next fifty years. <laughs> <laughs> So I actually don't know. I mean, there's a lot of years in that those that threesome right there. There's a lot of years of experience. And if Dick has is the most senior teacher in the state of Maine, and I believe he is, Mort is probably right up there, um, and maybe number two, or maybe I'm wrong, and maybe there's I'm starting a competition between them um, now to see who's really been the longest longest serving. But Mort has been with us for 17 years. Um, and he is the original Latin teacher um, in Cape Elizabeth. And 
the thing that is fascinating about Mort is he, he, he brings an incredible passion about his subject to every single day, every single class. Um, he loves bringing in history. It's not just about learning Latin. It's about learning about the history and learning about the cultural context and learning about all those things. It's learning about a lot of stories that Mort brings to every single class um, about the Red Sox, about Bowdoin, about uh, who knows, um, all sorts of things. And the fascinating thing to me, and I think one of the most commendable things, is there's been a real shift over the 17 years that Mort, Mort has been at CEHS in the, the, the sort of the demographic and achievement level of the students that he served. Um, when Latin was first introduced, it seemed to attract students who wanted to take Latin as a second language and who were among, among Cape Elizabeth's high achieve, highest achievers and just had a natural gift for it. Um, and that has changed, so Mort is now serving a much more diverse clientele and doing it equally well. Um, the quality of the program that Mort delivers is evidenced by how well his kids do in the National Latin Exam every single year. Um, and, and I will say that Mort is, anybody who knows him knows that he is one of the great characters in the high school. Um, uh, he gets to school about 6.30 in the morning. Um, he beats me every day. Um, and he's out there, he picks up the newspapers every day, and then he starts curling the picnic tables as for as part of his exercise regimen. Um, he, he is a complete and utter character. He has so many sayings, I'm not even going to begin to try to, to share with you all the sayings that Mort has, but his students know them. Um, he, is a, he is sitting next to Mr. Mr. Pendarvis, who is one of the most technologically adept teachers in the high school, and Mort is, and I say this with great affection and respect, one of the major Luddites of the school, um, and Mort certainly understands that historical reference. It is always a pleasure to get a handwritten note from Mort Soul that always ends ex anime. Is that what it is, Mort? Ex animo is a friendly part, it means from the soul, so it's a it's a pun in itself. Ex animo means from the soul. Sorry. So, I always wondered. I was sort of scared to ask him what it meant, but I was assuming it was a nice, <laughs> that was a nice thing. But it could have been, could have been something else entirely. But that's not part of Mort's character. If you haven't ever seen Morsey's, Mort's Casey at the bat, it is a unbelievable performance that he puts on for the kids every single year. Um, and we will certainly miss Casey at the bat. He did bring it, it was, was actually able several years ago to bring it to Fenway Park and perform it in Fenway Park um, for the assembled thousands and thousands um, during a Red Sox game. So um, the other thing that Mort does every single, every single Friday, the kids are guaranteed to have a test. Every single Friday they have a test. I think that's been true for 17 of the 17 years that he's been at Cape Elizabeth High School. Keeps the kids on, the to on his toes. They're always well prepared. They do well. So we will absolutely more miss Mort as a treasured icon, a character, and a completely dedicated teacher at the high school. So thank you for all your years of service as well, Mort. celebrate the retirees since we have a full house of basketball players here who are waiting patiently. We thought we would do that before the break and then we can all celebrate together. So. Is Chris here? Castro? Thank you for recognizing the girls. Um, it seems like it was a while ago now that some of them are dressed in lacrosse gear, um, and I'm happy to report they won. So they're happy. Oh. 
but the sportsmanship was uh, a great honor for them. We had a great year, but at the end of the day, even though the record doesn't always reflect um, how good, maybe it certainly doesn't reflect how good um, they are as people and how hard they work and how much they dedicate themselves. So to win the sportsmanship award and to hear other coaches um, tell me game after game how they admire how hard the girls play, how they play it the right way, um, and how they support one another um, really means a lot. And the kids don't usually hear that. Um, I hear it, and I try to let them know, but I think validation came through being voted by the other teams in the league um, as sportsmanship um, recipients. So. They play the game the right way, they win with humility, they lose with grace, and they treat each other like family. They're a great group of girls. Um, so we were so excited and so proud to hear about this award, and, and in, I think, our minds, nothing matters more than this sort of award, and um, we just, we're sorry it's a bit late in recognizing you, but um, we're doing it tonight before you guys are gone, gone. <laughs> Congratulations on the cross you played. So um, we, we have um, certificates. If anybody's not here, maybe you can just take it for them. Okay. Um, Lily Frame. Emily Supple. Okay. Emily Goulding. Allison Garrity. Addie Whalen. Carly Chapin. retirement celebration. <laughs> we'll take a 15 minute break. Thank you.
back, everybody. Um, we're picking up after our retiree reception. And next on the agenda are reports from the administrators. First, the principals, whoever wants to go first. Jason does. <laughs> Hello again. So uh, keep it brief tonight. Um, uh, at Pond Cove, I mean, of course, it's very, very busy. End of the year, lots of stuff going on. We've finished up our end of the year academic assessments, but um, teaching and learning definitely continues. We have a, a lot of fun things planned, field days and um, fourth grade celebration and field trips, but we really understand the um, benefits of maintaining a routine for our young learners and the value of the time that we have left to teach them. Um, the last few days of school. So we're maintaining routine, routines, but also um, having a lot of fun and celebrating too. Um, so in, I think the big deal for us is that many of our fourth graders appear ready to be fifth graders. So um, I think they're ready to go and um, hang out with Troy for four years. So, um, so they're excited about the fourth grade up to fifth grade step up day, which will be um, on June 13th, Thursday in the afternoon, and then the fourth grade celebration, which is a, a is is amazing. Really, our parent organization and some key parents put that on for us, um, and it's it's just a great time, a great um, time to acknowledge all their work and, and the fact that they're moving on up. So. Um, we're looking forward to that. And I just, particularly this year, want to thank um, the middle school staff, middle, middle school administration, Troy and Kyle, and guidance department and the teachers for working really closely with us this year on the transition plan. Um, I know that my um, fourth grade teachers have commented that they've been very pleased with um, administration coming over to Pond Cove to meet with fourth grade teachers and middle school teachers coming over to Pond Cove. So I think that um, that's going really well. So thank you, middle school. And that's really all I have for tonight. Thank you. That's great. Thank you for sharing that, Jason. I said nothing prepared, so I'm going to make it up. Um, <laughs> so it was like a big jigsaw puzzle to, fill, to do a team. And it, Last year I kind of just watched it happen and this year I got a little more involved and Kyle's been involved, but to see the amount of time it takes for the fourth grade teachers to try to thoughtfully place kids and design all these teams um, is, is really quite a process. And um, so I appreciate that, but it's like having a huge jigsaw puzzle in front of you and, and just working at it. So, but I definitely believe that the power is in, you know, what is that? An ounce of prevention's worth a pound of cure, is that saying? So, um, you know, getting that ready, to, doing a good job in the beginning and front loading that really makes for a stronger year for all the kids. So that happened. We have hosted one night, we had a, a incoming fifth grade parent night, which was, I think, a, a pretty nice success. We had about 55, 60 people there and had some great questions and feedback. So we're, we're trying to kind of promote that process a little earlier in the year. I think we're gonna do a similar thing for sixth grade parents in the fall. So we have a lot of that stuff is going on. Um, continuing the year, we have our eighth grade um, transition to the high school is Friday. This little, I think it's only like an hour, hour and 15 minutes or something at the high school. Um, but then really the biggest thing I wanted to share quickly was that our last staff meeting on Monday, it's, it take, we, we often get caught up in, in the pace of our year or our day, and we don't really reflect and celebrate very much. So we kind of highlighted some of the things. When I got hired, I asked them what they were most proud of. It was really hard to come up with that answer. <clears throat> and so that was kind of been a goal, like let's pick some things that we can really do well. So this year, some celebrations were our peer visits. It's kind of led the, the local communities are all kind of envious because our teachers are out in their schools and they're wondering why are you out in our school. And so now I think it's something that we've led the way in and, and it's kind of catching. And when you hit something like that, it's, it's like, wow, that was a good risk to take and it was powerful and it's starting to pay back. Also, the good work of our fifth grade team taking on the task of switching to the one to four grading scale and, and kind of just tackling that head on and and you know, I think that's a pretty big step and an accomplishment for that group of people to, to do that really kind of quickly. Um, so that's been a, been a huge success. 
um, the mental health initiative was a huge success. So it was a bunch. And I think until you sit down and really talk about all of those things, and, and when I was talking about it, they're all nodding, and you can start to see that pride build up a little bit. But lastly, the thing I think we forget to celebrate here, and I don't know if it's because it's an expectation or I kind of get the feeling that sometimes we're embarrassed or whatever, but we're really a high-performing school. <laughs> And when you compare yourself to these other places and you see um, how you're kind of scoring out, because I took all the screenshots of the report cards before they were taken down from the state site, and there's some pretty good information on there. Just, so to share that with them and to stop for a minute once in a while and realize what, what we have here and the quality of kids we have and parents and community and celebrate that and then be kind of proud of that. I think sometimes we need permission to do that. So um, that's kind of how we ended our last staff meeting and hopefully we get through the next four or five days peacefully and all will be good. Thanks. Thanks, Tori. Thank <coughs> so just a, a few quick sort of unrelated three strands. Um, one is um, thanking some parents um, who've been working hard all year, and groups of parents who've been working hard all year to support students. Um, and one of that, those group of parents, their work came to culmination Sunday night into Monday morning with Project Graduation. And I particularly wanted to mention Stephanie Manning and Trudy Backey. I would not want to know the number of hours that they put into organizing and supporting um, a huge investment in the safety of Cape Elizabeth graduates. Um, on graduation evening, so that was uh, a very positive affair. I wanted to thank the, the leadership and the membership of the High School Parent Association. They give grants, they raise money, they support creative things, and they show appreciation to teachers frequently. Um, their lunches that happen, teacher appreciation lunches, the cookie swap they organize, and all that sort of thing, it all takes a lot of time, it all adds up, and it's absolutely great. Um, and then unrelated is in when I was preparing for the senior celebration, which happened last week, I noticed a few trends. It's only one year's data point, so I don't know if it means anything or not. But there are a couple of fascinating trends in terms of the colleges that I noticed that kids are going to. And one is, I think, and I think part of this is probably financially driven and just being very practical and perhaps um, being a little less focused on college rankings and perceived prestige and name brand schools and that sort of thing. And that is, there's an awful lot of students who are going to state universities, main universities, non-main universities, state universities, where they can get a great education. Um, and one of the things that fascinated me is we have 12 students going to Southern Maine Community College um, this year, 12 graduates, which is um, a huge practical step, an economical step, so that kids can leave college probably as relatively debt-free as they can to get help, help them get a better head start. Some of them will get um, uh, certificates in various trades in addition to their associate's degree. Some of them may take that as a stepping stone to a four-year college and getting a degree elsewhere. So I thought that was very, very interesting. That's um, quite a bit more than we've had historically. It has been increasing, but that was a big jump. And the third thing I wanted to mention, I was remiss, um, at graduation I asked veterans to stand, and one group of people that I didn't ask to stand is the students who are going into the armed forces. So I wanted to give a, a call out to Jack Aceto, who is going into the Army. Um, I think he starts basic training next month, he told me, and Jeremy Powers, who's entering the Marines. Um, and we'll be also starting basic training this summer. So congratulations to them, and I wanted to mention their commitment to service that their step is demonstrating. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Chef. <laughs> In uh, special education, I think probably the biggest news I have is that Two weeks ago, we did interviews for the psychology position. I think I've mentioned it a few times that we've kind of done our best to hire contracted folks all, all school year long. And, and that has worked out well, and I certainly appreciate that we were able to get them. But we did interviews for the permanent position, and hopefully by the end of the evening, uh, we'll have approved our number one candidate. Um, 
As far as things going on upstairs, we've been working fast and furious for planning for extended school year. Some of our students receive services throughout the summer and uh, we're trying to plan for that. It's going to take place at the high school again. Um, teams in all schools are busy wrapping up IEP meetings, completing progress notes, and doing transition work. Um, currently, we're servicing 167 students in special ed. Pond Cove, there's 71. Middle school's 46, and high school's 50 students. We do have 12 students in referral, two students out of district. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. I'm going to talk about uh, Gifted and Talented and also professional development this evening. Um, in terms of our Gifted and Talented services, we recently completed the screening and identification process. We've identified five third graders, which represents 5% of the class, which is exactly where we should be. We're not permitted by the state, technically, to identify more than 3 to 5%. And we also identified two additional fifth graders. We held interviews this past Monday for a new GT teacher, and we hope to have someone hired by next week. And then in terms of professional development, um, the application deadline for summer work was last Friday. We received 50 applications. Um, these are applications from our teachers. They are collaborative um, and align, pro collaborative projects that are aligned to uh, building and district goals. We're in the process of reviewing them and uh, we'll let the educators know whether and at what level their project has been supported by the end of this week. So that's very exciting. Um, and then um, our great schools partnership coach, Ted Hall, is going to be completing this year's work by providing facilitator and data analysis training, training to any available teacher leaders. He's going to be working with um, the Pond Cove teacher leaders on June 20th, uh, mid middle school teacher leaders on the 25th, and high school teacher leaders on the 27th. And we are already engaged in planning for next year. Um, the Pond Cove content leaders who've been instrumental in planning professional development are, are continuing happily. Um, we have two middle school content leaders rolling off, Kristen Arbor, um, who has been for two years our science content leader, and Hannah Rohner, who's been the ELA content leader, and they've both done a wonderful job, and I just wanted to publi publicly acknowledge how much we've appreciated um, all, the, all the work they've put in their organizational and leadership skills. Um, and um, they, um, we are in the process of replacing them, so you'll see those names next fall. And then um, at the high school, I'm wrapping up my one-on-one -on -one conversation with staff. Um, I've met with 28 teachers so far. These are conversations that range from 30 to 45 minutes. I was just telling Mark Pendarvis that um, it's been about my, my most favorite part of the year so far. The conversations have been productive and even inspiring, and I'm really looking forward to sharing the results with them um, and, and working with them to plan next year's professional development. And that's it. Kathy, yeah. the uh, number of people who are applying for um, options or opportunities this summer, is that an average number, 50, or yeah. is that, yeah? Yeah, actually it's slightly more than we had last year, I think. It's interesting that you bring that up, because I just found that impressive. Isn't and it? I, I am so excited to hear that there are 50 teachers that, that want to work on their craft over the summer. And actually, to be clear, that's 50 applications, and each application involves at least two teachers. Mm -hmm. oh. So we have teachers who are involved in multiple uh, multiple projects, and it is it's tremendous because it's it is the best time to get that kind of work done. So that's really exciting. Great. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you. So Catherine is um, out sick tonight. She's not feeling well. You do have her financials in your packet. So if you have any questions, I'm sure if you can get them to me or to her, um, we'd be happy to supply with you, you with answers. So the end of the year has been very busy. Um, as everybody's talked about, uh, events throughout the district, concerts, field trips, special project presentations, and many more things going on. Uh, behind the scenes, some staff members have been b busy preparing for the next year. Plans for trainings, as required by new laws in the area of mandated reporting for suspected sexual abuse and suicide prevention, have been taken on by our school social workers and counselors. 
Uh, so they're busy uh, planning a beginning of the year training and also some uh, staff meeting trainings. Some staff have participated in interviews as we fill vacancies for next year. Special Ed, as Dell said, our staff are busy planning for the extended year program. They've had charts up all over the office with all kinds of things on them um, about the extended year program. Many staff are anticipating professional development uh, opportunities that they will attend this summer, as Kathy was talking about. Um, maintenance and custodial staff have been planning their summer schedules in an effort to work around the many activities that are going on in our, our schools this summer, and that's quite a challenge. Um, so while, while we're busy closing out the 2018-19 school year, we're also in full swing for planning for future events for next year. So you have in your packet um, an enrollment, a uh, June enrollment that shows that we are up one student from May and down 14 students from last year at this time. And um, I know probably most of you know this, but I did receive the resignation of Catherine Mesmer for our business manager. Uh, Catherine has accepted a new position near Gray. And um, in uh, your packets or um, as a separate attachment, you do have um, uh, a description for um, the business manager that hopefully you will approve later on in this meeting. So if you wanna take a look at that. So we've been very busy finishing out this year and getting ready for next year. Is that you? That's okay. it. Okay, all right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, then we'll move on to new business. Um, consideration to approve the following job descriptions. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve the following job descriptions. Maintenance mechanic, foreman, school business manager, bookkeeper, payroll coordinator, accounts payable clerk, and receptionist. Second. <clears throat> Second. John, do you want to speak to if there's any significant changes that we should? Um, so I, I have met with, um, Arlene Mokaport, our human resources person, and with um, all of the people who um, fulfill those, those positions at this point to review um, the old uh, job description that we had just to bring, to bring it up to date. Um, there have been some, um, some minor changes in some, um, for example, in the maintenance mechanic form, and that job has changed a little bit um, in the focus. So um, I met with um, Rob, the, the man who is in that position, and Perry about, uh, about that job description, um, just to bring it up to date. So there's not a lot, um, a lot of changes. Um, we did look at the business office and just do some switching around of responsibilities, as we said we were going to do and um, as I said I've gone over with those people that are in those positions um, and and the other people to make sure that everybody's um, in agreement uh, about what they're doing and, and uh, so that's what is um, represented here so thank you any discussion all those in favor <coughs> And I will continue, we're, we're continuing to look at job descriptions, so I'll be continuing to bring you some other ones. Um, next, item 8B, may I have a motion please? I move we grant the superintendent of schools authority to hire school personnel, excluding in administrative positions, which will require board approval during the summer. I have a second? Second. Any discussion? This is typical practice, correct? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it just yeah. allows us to you know, hire people as we interview and um, move things along during the summer instead of having to pull everybody together for a meeting. Great, yeah, thank you for doing that. Yeah. All those in favor? Okay, next item, 8C, may I have a motion, please? Move we approve the following policies for second reading. Policy FF, naming of school facilities, and policy ACAA, harassment and sexual harassment of students. You have a second? A second. Any discussion? Uh, I'll just make a comment on the um, <coughs> policy FF, naming of school facilities. <coughs> that is the policy that uh, we had a very bare bones policy 
had, I believe it was two meetings ago, we had discussed um, filling it out with sort of um, more, more language around the process, creating a committee, um, and putting in more, um, more of the, the basically the, the intent of the, of the policy. And then we brought it back last month, and we thought um, Elizabeth had pointed out rightly that that was the first time we brought it to the public for uh, consideration and wanted to leave an opportunity for meaningful feedback if there was any after that presentation. So <clears throat> seeing that there was, there was no additional feedback at that point, <laughs> so we're now going to, uh, um, uh, we're bringing the policy that we drafted and, and is included in the packet now for approval. Uh, on harassment and sexual uh, harassment of students, that one has a minor um, sort of um, naming updates. Nothing substantive has changed in that policy. Okay. Thank you. Pastor? Uh, I have some um, questions if uh, Hope can elaborate since we heard earlier uh, today from students about this course. If any of their needs are met here, and whether we need to reach out to them to include this. And if we approve this down the road, this is amendable, they can I be added. I can address that question. Um, first of all, you reminded me that you mentioned cyber uh, bullying, and there's yeah. a separate policy for cyber bullying, so we had it covered. Okay. I want to make sure you knew that we, okay. we did, I did address that question, um, or at least I looked into it. Um, and with respect to the assault, question, um, it is on the radar for an agenda uh, item for the policy committee in the fall. Okay. Uh, it is something that we, we have to have with respect to the mandatory reporting. So it, it is, it's, there is action being taken. Okay, but it's separate than this. It's separate, yes. Okay. Yeah. But with any policy, if there's, you know, if it comes up for review in the future, there's always room for uh, amending, if need be. Yeah. Um, just a comment here. Uh, I don't know where it goes, uh, but just an idea that came out from my, uh, and it should be discussed at the policy meetings, but it looks like from one of the students' uh, perspective that the person was not being reached to or staff intervened and staff may not have uh, intervened correctly or they might have been biased. So my question is, when such situation occurs, can we get someone from outside who does not have any biases and assess the issues? Is that a possibility? I'm not sure how to answer, answer that. Um, I was just gonna make a comment as a policy, just, uh -huh. I have, I mean, I'm the policy committee chair and I'm just, this motion is with reference to approving these two policies, so we're kind of going off topic. Mm -hmm. okay. To the extent we're having a discussion right now, it really should be. Okay, to the to this stuff, okay. Within this bullet point. Thank you. Fair point. <clears throat> okay, then um, no further discussion. I was just going to say thank you. I know that um, my objection to approving it as a at the first read last time may have seemed um, just sort of procedural, but I just felt it was important, especially you know since we were you know dramatically changing the uh, naming of school facilities for the better, and I'm really pleased with the work that went into that, and it feels very um, community centered, and um, it gives much more direction. So. Thank you for the forbearance and thank you for the work. All those in favor? Okay, so next on our agenda, we have item 8D and added um, at the beginning of our meeting um, is the name for Wendy Dorziak for District Web the Webmaster. Webmaster. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve the following 2019-2020 co-curricular and extracurricular personnel nominations as defined and described in our packet. I second. So, Maura and then Heather, you second? Mm -hmm. um, any discussion? I would like to thank um, administration for um, really 
getting ahead of these. A lot of times uh, in the past we've seen some of these either at the end of August or the beginning of September. So I would um, like to thank administrators for bringing this to us in advance so that we can review and have these um, positions settled well in advance of the fall. And I know it's not easy and I appreciate it very much. And thank you to everybody that is willing to put in this extra work to enrich the lives of our students. Um, I have a question. Jeff Thorax not here, and I don't know if Jeff Shedd can help or if Donna knows the answer to this. Um, and it's just clear, clarity for myself. Football has a lot of people being stipend, and it says football assistant first stipend, football assistant second stipend, and then another person, football assistant second stipend, and then another assistant, football assistant. I'm wondering if that can be explained, because my understanding is that with each, and then there's, uh, and then there's more on the other side, football assistant and football assistant. Um, and my understanding was that with each sport, there is a head coach and an, varsity, or, and as an assistant, and a junior varsity coach and an assistant? I, it just doesn't seem to make I sense. I can find out. I have no idea. It's like you know, some John? of them are booster funded, too. Oh. That would be great. I, I'm sure there's an easy explanation. I just don't get it. So. Watch some football. You will get it. I, I believe that almost all those positions, with the exception of three coaching positions, are booster funded positions. Great. I can Thank you. confirm that with Jeff, but I've heard him say that in the past, and I'm quite sure that's the case. That would be great. I would love a confirmation on that, and that would be the explanation I'm looking for. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Jeff. Uh, okay, all those in favor? Um, okay, so next on our agenda, we have item 8E. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve, is it Kate or Katie? K Katie. Katie Holland as psychological examiner. Do I have a second? I second. Any discussion? Okay. Um, so I see that it would see. Now the team interviewed her, and then I interviewed her via Skype. She was in Colorado. Yeah. Okay. Um, very nice young woman. Very knowledgeable. Great experience. And just remind me, is this for a full time or a part time? Full time. Full time. Okay. Oh, there it is, right there. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Um, next, we added to the agenda item eight F. Um, Consideration to approve a new business manager. Marsha Weeks. Marsha Weeks. May I have a motion, please? I move that we approve uh, as the business manager, um, Marsha Weeks. Second. Okay. Um, any discussion? Well, she works in Portland right now. Mm -hmm. um, she did extensive work in Arizona before she left to raise her family, um, working for, I believe, the, is it the county. state? The county in Arizona. And uh, very impressive with her knowledge of business administration, so. In, in schools or? Um, that was for a county, not okay. school related, okay. but she's now working in the Portland schools. So right. she, okay. Yeah. And thanks for the committee work on the interview. All those in favor? <laughs> All right. Next, we're moving on um, to committee reports. <coughs> uh, policy, I don't know, Hope, if you want to add anything. Sure, yeah. So um, policy will, um, as is typical, we will meet again in the fall. So I believe our meeting is not on the calendar, but it should be a, a early September is the, the plan for that. Um, and there is no agenda set at the moment, but we have certain policies on our radar to review, and they include uh, cell phone policy, um, the policy regarding assault, um, which is something we um, need, must do, um, and a technology uh, policy is something that has been raised. Great, thank you. <clears throat> 
Uh, PAS, I have nothing to report. They uh, graduated in um, late May, um, so there hasn't been a meeting since the last no. one. Uh, tech committee, Elizabeth? I'd like to cede my time to the chair to speak about the um, website possibilities, if that's appropriate at this time. Sure, yeah, we are, um, we have met, um, we're gonna meet again tomorrow, this uh, the subcommittee, um, Elizabeth is on it, and we're currently trying to um, identify which uh, what content slash host um, web developer that we're gonna um, sign a contract with and hopefully get started very soon, hopefully after tonight. Um, and then once once we have signed an agreement letter, um, it takes roughly three to six weeks for the launch of the new website. So it's probably ho hopefully by the by September we'll be ready to go. And the committee is there a student representation? Uh, at this point, no, because we're just we're still doing the sort of the okay. legwork. But um, okay, I good. think what we'll do is send out because it's tricky over the summer. We'll send out emails and, and surveys, um, hopefully even one tomorrow, um, to ha ask some basic questions, and then there'll be another one for more input. Okay. But because it's a summer gig, it's, it's a little hard to have organized student input. Yeah, no, we just like to see a website that's user-friendly to potential parents, to existing teachers, to students, to staff. So the audience is important, who's your audience? Don't think that it's just gonna be the parents mm -hmm. taking advantage of it. So I just wanna make sure that it's available to yeah. all of them. Thank you. Okay, that's it. Drop out, please, announce already. Yeah, we met um, once a while ago, and uh, majority of that time was used by a young gentleman who unfortunately had dropped out of um, Cape High School, even though he was through the whole school system. And uh, so he came to share with us his, uh, the good and the bad and the ugly. And, uh, and so it was, it was a recent person and thus uh, was very, very um, positive conversation of what worked, what did not work. And, uh, we plan to have more meetings with him and he's going to be involved in the committee and address, because he's just, everyone, everyone is, every dropout is a special case of different reasoning. So we're trying to identify where there might be some, uh, where, where we can improve in different areas within the school system. Our next meeting is this Friday the 14th, I think at 8 a.m. Is that right, Mr. Shed? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Kimberly, any news from Steve? No news from Steve. Um, the meeting was supposed to be tomorrow night. Um, they emailed yesterday to say it was changed to last night, and it was my daughter's fifth birthday, so I did not go to the meeting. Okay. Great. Thank you. Any school board agenda requests for the next meeting, which will be, um, I don't have the exact date, but the end of August uh, will be our next regular school board business meeting. No, but if you don't mind, I would just like to remind the public that um, school board agenda requests can be made by calling the um, school department office, by emailing um, Susanna, the school board chair, by emailing um, Donna Wolfram, our superintendent, uh, by coming into the office and making a request. So there are lots of ways, other, no smoke signals, but to, to make school board agenda requests, and we welcome them. I would um, have a request, I don't know if it has to be for that meeting, but we had a workshop um, sometime last year. I feel like um, it was Alice, the active response, um, Nate Carpenter and Aaron Taylor, and I can't remember who all, but um, we did a workshop. Um, and I'm just curious kind of how that's proceeding and um, a report in on what that looks like. Seems like the beginning of the school year is a perfect time. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to get an update. Yep. Anyone else? You think about it later? Feel free to ask. Okay, announcement about upcoming meetings. I think we've heard about um, dropout prevention committee is on Friday. 
policy met today, I believe, right? The policy meet today? No. Are you meeting? We're from September. Oh, oh, okay, September. And then I think that's it. We're, we're, we're just waiting on the vote. Hopefully we'll have no reason to meet again um, after tonight. Um, so I think that's it, right? Okay, mm -hmm. all right, so then may I have a motion, please? I move, we adjourn. I second. All those in favor? Happy, happy July.